Hello everyone, the Panda Photographer here, and we're going to talk about zoom lenses in this episode of the live, but um, I really, really want to uh, stress enough that if you guys are new to this channel, please do subscribe to the channel if you like the content, and I will be listening to some of you guys' feedback on some of these uh, zoom lenses that I do recommend, some I have used but some I do wish to use but I'm gonna wait for a few minutes before uh, we start so good afternoon good evening and good morning to those so I'm the panda photographer you know me as KK Alexander I am a self-taught photographer and videographer I run a website called 646 studios where I show and publicize my photography and I have written tutorials on photography videography and I got a portfolio and all types of cool uh, reviews on some of the lenses I've used and some of the gear that I use but with that said everyone as I said before, I'm going to wait a few minutes and I'm going to wait until people come into the the live chat and I'm going to wait about two more minutes before I start trying to get in the room and hear it. But other than that guys, uh, yep, today I'm going to be talking about zoom lenses. Also I'm going to be talking about some of the videography tips. I got my notes here, so I'm going to help with some of the research that over the years I have come up with so and some of the, I, the research that I also uh, adapted with other people's uh, techniques or purposes and when it comes down to videography but with that said everyone if you are in the live please let me know in the chat so we can see how many people are here in the chat right now just have one individual in the chat. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes before we start. But this episode, I'm not gonna talk about just Sony glass. Uh, I'm gonna talk about some Canon glass, some Tamron glass, some uh, Nikon glass, some Panasonic glass, uh, some Fuji glass, and what I think you may like. And Basically, if you are a Fuji shooter, if you're a Pentax shooter, if you're a Nikon shooter, uh, I do recommend this particular zoom lenses. Now, I'm not going to be talking about on a budget in this episode. I'm going to be talking about if you were to actually have an option. Now, there's one lens in here that I talk about quite often that you might want to consider for all of the carry mounts, but that's just just me that just me giving you some grain of salt here to think about it but like I said I'm gonna wait a few more minutes but I hope everyone is having a happy good Thursday and I'm gonna get started in just a moment here let me remove my mic first Alright guys, I'm going to get started in about 4 minutes. Now, if you guys haven't been to my website, right? If you haven't been to my website, just let you guys know, here's my website, 646studios.com. You can go to my tutorials, read about who I am, my little biography if you like to. Uh, each of these photos here are links to the portfolio so you don't have to scroll through the menu system on the website. So if you wanted to go to a specific folder, you can go down to the portfolio links and just hit portraits or events or cities, urban or nature. But with that said everyone, and I do also I uh, have a Instagram at the panda photographer all one word so if you guys are looking for me on Instagram I also have a Facebook 
all that information is down below I do accept PayPal donations if you guys want to make a small donation to this channel and to what I do as a photographer there's a PayPal donation right here on the bottom of the page where you can highlight it and you go directly to the page it doesn't matter but I got tips on videography portrait photography uh, videography uh, lenses stuff that I use and much more but with that said everyone I'm gonna get started here and I want to talk about some of the lenses that I do recommend and if you guys are have any questions about any of the lenses that I have chosen in this category just let me know in the comments down below all right let's get started Alright everyone, so the first item on this list is the Tenron AF A020 S700 which is the 1530 and then F2.8 wide angle lens for the Sony A mount but it's not just for the Sony A mount, it's for the Nikon FX for the full frame not DX so if you do have a DX Nikon camera it will not it can be compatible but you need an adapter but it's for the full frame which is FX and it's also for the Canon so if you have a Canon EF body you can adapt it on so this is Taiwan's SP new version of the 15 to 30 this is what I recommend if you want to use this for landscape photography, if you want to use it for bulky photography, uh, street photography, if you want to use it for night photography, long exposures, uh, astro photography, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a, it's, it's a lens that I do recommend. Uh, I have rented it before for the A mount, and it's pretty fast when it comes down to its. Uh, what is it? Ultrasonic motors, which is the autofocus capabilities. Uh, it is actually weather. Uh, it's not fully weather. It's actually weather sealed, and it has a weather gasket uh, for all mounts for the Nikon and for the Canon, and for the Sony. By the way, uh, let me answer this out of here really quickly. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is one of the lenses I do recommend and if you guys are fans of the Tamron SP line and I have to say Tamron has been stepping up this game when it comes down to uh, creating some new lenses like they rebranded the whole entire line the 35, the 45, the 85, the 90 which is pretty damn remarkable and they're coming up with 70 and they come in with what is it 105 lens for the Sony Emo. So, if you guys are interested in that, you guys can uh, hit the links down in the descriptions below where you can actually purchase it. Now, yes, it's pretty pricey, it's $1,200. And as I said, this video is not really for the budget photographer, but if you are a person that wants to step up from the kit lens that wants to invest in some really good glass, I do recommend it. It's a it's a part of uh, the Canon Nikon to Sony line, A mount. Now with the A mount, you can use a, what is that? LAE4 adapter to mount it onto the E mount, but uh, it's based on taste limited. I can tell you what to do, I can tell you what to buy, but these are the lenses that I do recommend. I rented it before, it was pretty damn fast, pretty good. Uh, has that uh, four light coating in the front of the element, uh, which is pretty damn remarkable. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. It comes with a nice lens cap to it. Its whole economic design really. It's really select. It's really nice. It's really good. Uh, when it comes down to the focal focal length, uh, turning the focal lengths in different modes, I do find it to be a little bit uh, stiff sometimes. But I find it to be a little stiff. But other than that, it's still smooth. It still focuses well. It still has a very good auto 
fast auto focus by the way now if you can you're using pixel detection this may vary this may be a best option for you but as i say guys these are the lenses that are going to be recommending if you are not on a budget and you have a little bit of cash to spend now as the panel photographer I can't say for sure how you will feel about the experience using this lens. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But what I do recommend before you even purchase it, rent it. Now I'm not sponsored by borrowing lenses, but borrowing lenses have a great deal on renting lenses for a day, three days, five days, seven days. So if you do want to test out the lens before you want to buy it, borrow lenses also is another source where you can rent the lens for really cheap and see how it performs on your current camera body but note that as i said before for the canon ef camera bodies and for the nikon full frame not dx so if you do have a dx it's not going to be compatible if you have a full frame nikon fx camera it's going to be compatible if you have a sony alpha a mount it's going to be compatible and if you have the Sony LAE4 adapter to mount it onto the e-mount it's going to be really really nice so therefore you have options there now anyway let's move on to the next particular which is you guys know I had to put it in there I had to put it in there the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 art lens now they make this for the Canon Nikon Pentax Sigma and the Sony versions so as I said before for the Canon version if you have an MC11 adapter that is is made for the e-mount you can use the Canon version of this lens now this lens is particularly different from the others because of that aperture the aperture is 1.8 and it lets in tons a full 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 stop of light totally different from f2.8 1.8 means like that's a full full stop of some insane bokeh not just the bokeh but some really really insane low light situations especially for your videographers this lens is very popular among videographers and photographers when they shoot in street or doing astrophotography or landscapes or long exposure and as i said as a photographer myself using this for lens land, long exposures as for photography sometimes street photography and time lapses i would say this is the lens to go with now keep in mind it does have a really really fast autofocus system it may be a hit and miss here with the with the hsm uh system but keep in mind it does not i repeat it does not have stabilization on the lens or what weather sealant so if you are someone that is looking into buying a lens and this caliber first of all make sure that you no know, as the experience of me owning this lens for almost four years i will have to say i take it out in the rain take it out in the snow uh it wasn't really heavy snow or heavy rain but they do sell rain covers for your camera so it is optional to take this out and wet weather well, as long as you buy rain covers for your camera gear and lenses you'll be fine in the, in the rain or snow doesn't matter but this is a really good lens for videographers photographers if you're in that category and it does come with the Sigma it does have an option sorry option for the Sigma dock if you want to reprogram this lens I'm not saying that you should but there's options for it all right so if you're interested let me know down in the comments below what lens that you would consider buying. Now, this lens is actually the cheapest out of all of them, I believe. This one is actually $800. So, therefore, you get a big bang of buck. Now, it does have a 72 thread count and a front element. So, I definitely recommend a polarizer when you're doing like long exposures or, or an ND uh, filter or a density ND filter or a casual ND filter. I definitely recommend get one of the one of those to add with this lens when you're doing long exposures especially if you're doing waterfalls you really want to actually get rid of those unwanted highlights and those blown out highlights and you know you want to actually extract some more detail into your image when you're doing long exposures but this is one lens I do recommend but 
um, it's up to you guys to decide and as I said they do make it for the Canon they do make it for the Nikon they do make it for the Pentax Sigma and Sony and as I said with the Sony you have an option Sony e-mount users you can absolutely use the Canon or the Sony version the Canon version you need the MC11 adapter and with the Sony you will need the LAE4 adapter from A to E mount so with that said everyone let's get into the next one so here's a Canon lens for you Canon users out there now this may be a, a pretty old lens to say but people still use it to this day it's number one top choice now you have options here so this is the EFS 17 to 55 f 2.8 IS USM lens for the Canon now this one is eight hundred and twenty nine dollars so the same 1835 is the cheapest at 799 but if you are a cannon shooter and you're looking for a little bit more wide coverage when it comes down to any of your videography or your photography or if you're blogging so for, this is a good lens for you bloggers out there so a lot of you bloggers really want to really emphasize and capture and get this lens if you're an EFS mount user so now you have an option to buy polarizer or a UV, UV filter and I'm going to say this to all of you photographers and videographers all right if you are going to buy a lens and this has happened to me one time I had dropped my lens on its front element and broke it I definitely recommend buying a UV filter to protect that front element and that's just a security measurement that I would definitely recommend I'm not saying that you should but I definitely recommend it um, but with that said everyone let me turn this down a little bit so, so with that said everyone uh, other than that guys this is a Canon version that I definitely recommend and if you guys really want to uh, buy third party uh, UV filters or polarizers I definitely recommend it I don't recommend the Amazon basic polarizer I, I don't recommend it it's, it's really crappy it's gonna make your images look like shit to be honest so I definitely rec recommend buying aftermarket Tiffin, Heliopan, Zami or whatever you consider it as your favorite uh, uh, filter for your front element so other than that guys now Nikon for your Nikon DX fans out there so I didn't leave you out so I had something in plan for you so for you Nikon shooters out there using DX mount camera bodies the 17 to 55 f2.8 FI ED zoom lens is going to be great for you bloggings which I really don't think you guys are going to be blogging probably going to be blogging with something else but I do recommend this for street photography, portrait photography, astrophotography, architecture photography, uh, long exposures, time lapses, uh, and much more. But this is probably one of the, the expensive uh, zoom lens for the Nikon AFS SDX system at $1,500. It's quite expensive, but it's one of the best lenses. For the crop sensor so if you guys are new to Nikon just got into photography just got into understanding what is DX stand for from FX DX stands for crop FX stands for full so yes it's a great lens it does cover uh, f2.8 which is by far great aperture by the way especially shooting for actual photography at 70 mil but if you want to go wider you have other choices from previously that you can do or can select from the options but if you are going to invest if you have Nikon glass and you had 1500 bucks to spend this is one of the lenses I definitely recommend if you are using a DX crop sensor camera so if you're using D500 go for it if you're using a D750 go for it so even if you're using D750 500 put that same one 1835 on there if you like to or that Tamron if you wanted to so wait let me make sure the Tamron is still I'm sorry 
my mistake turn one is only fx four frame so you can't put the time run up there so unfortunately but you have an option if you want to spend a little more money but if you are cheaper on a cheaper budget want to go under a thousand dollars and you want something a little bit more wide definitely recommend the same one 1835 and as I said it doesn't have weather sealing uh, it does it doesn't have weather sealing it doesn't have stabilization but the one thing you can do is take it with grain of salt buy a rain cover for your dealer several cameras I have one you should have one in your arsenal just in case uh, you can put the rain cover on it and you could go out and shoot in the rain or snow so you don't have to worry about it but physically I don't have to use it all the time I only probably used to maybe like twice the rain cover twice in my entire like last like two years um, normally times it would be fine uh, normally I just have something cover my lens or or have a lens covered or some type of lens uh, fabric over my lens but like I said it's optional guys so based on that as I said guys if you are watching this video later on after the live or you're watching this right now I'm the Panda Photographer, 646studios.com, and if you just been tuning in, please do subscribe to the channel. Go to my website here at 646studios.com, where I have tutorials on photography, videography, uh, written reviews on camera lenses, single lenses, a bunch of gear tutorials, videography tutorials, and much more. But other than that, we're going to continue to talk about the next lens for you Panasonic Lumix G users. The 235 f2.8 tiered power OIS lens is probably one of the best lenses right now to do video logging with, long exposures with, uh, astronaut photography, street photography, uh, just name it. You can pretty do it. Do it. You can pretty do it. Uh, I personally never use this lens, I have to say, but I heard really, really good things about it. Uh, I would definitely recommend it but as I said this one is a little bit on the $900 side so if you have $900 to spend go for it if you want to get the advanced version which you can get the advanced version uh, which comes with all these other accessories with like the 250 gigabyte uh, SD card with XX card and lens cleaner and fiber cloth and lens cap go for it it's a it's a hundred dollars more but I think that's actually a really good deal to be honest uh, to have that uh, three piece three piece kit set what did what does it come with yeah it comes with all of this for pretty cheap for a thousand dollars I would say that's a pretty de pretty damn good deal especially the SD card the SD card is 256 gigabyte it's a really good deal uh, but this is based on taste for you Panasonic users. I definitely use it. I think Photo Eike is using this lens. Uh, that's why I, I, when he was using it, I was like blown away by it. Uh, I think some other photographers use it. I think if I'm correct, uh, who else uses this lens that I, is, I watch all the time? I can't get it off the top of my head, but yeah, the 12 to 35 is one of the, one of the best lenses that you probably should buy if you are using a Panasonic G. G Panasonic Lumix G cameras and definitely recommend it. Now, for you email users, now it is optional, but I didn't want to go over two thousand dollars, so I'm gonna put the Sony 24 to 70 f4 Zero T F E O S S, which is when this lens came out, this lens was like really really good. Yes, it has f4. Uh, aperture but still it's a really good lens and it's all focused uh, from now as the firmware update the old the, the old the autofocus capabilities on this lens is by far pretty damn good uh, I personally haven't used it but when it first came out uh, what it was like two years ago three years ago something around there three four years ago same time when I got my uh, a77 mark tilt uh, people were talking about it like crazy and I had brought the a7r I sold the a7r then repurchased it and maybe like six months later again because I just missed the fundamental things about having a full frame and with portraits without cropping 
and wanted to utilize those full megapixels and that's what I bought the lens for I'd use it for video login and it was really good f4 point f4 f4 is like the perfect perfect like videographer like aperture especially during the day sunny days bright days overcast days it's really good so it helps to to it's actually a sharp focal length uh, I mean a sharp aperture to say but um, see here that I heard my phone go off but very sharp aperture uh, aperture lens I definitely recommend it but if you have more money to spend I definitely recommend the Sony actually let's go type it in Sony 24 to 70 G if you got a little bit more money to spend if you want to spend the Sony FE 24 to 70 that's on you 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 can spend that money but I, I, I'm pretty sure like with that money I'm definitely gonna buy a new body <laughs> but if you have money to spend you can go spend it you can go you know wish waste your money and cry later in your apartment but if you're sleeping with your lens and you baby your lens go for it but this is a good lens to go for it if you're gonna be doing landscapes portraits weddings uh, yeah especially weddings it's really good focal length for weddings portraits uh, time lapses landscapes long exposures so 24 to 70 is really good focal length for that category but it's a 2.8G it's probably one of the best lenses that Sony has to offer but I personally don't use it so it's up to you guys and yes and finally I didn't forget about you a mount users so I'm trying to be fair to my audience so this is particularly a very old lens this is the Sony 1630 f 2.8 standard zoom lens for the a mount and this one is actually the same price as the Sigma 18 to 35 and this one I believe has a super solid motor which is not the quietest at all it's pretty it's not noticeable but you can hear the motors rip when you're focusing so if you had an option to buy this Sony 16 to 50 f 2.8 standard zoom lens for the a mount that's your choice but keep in mind it does have well ceiling and it does have autofocus okay and I believe it does have stabilization if I'm correct so uh, if I'm correct it does have stabilization I might be wrong I used it in the past a few a few times uh, but I can't remember if it has stabilization and if I'm correct it says that this versatile 16 to 50 telephoto zoom has a innovative optical design and main uh, maintain a aperture of f2.8 max aperture with consistent outstanding to contrast and image quality throughout the zoom range so this is optional guys you don't have to purchase this one but it doesn't say anything about the entire the secret doesn't say anything about vibration so I don't think it does but you have an option you either go with this particular lens or you can go with the single 18 to 35 with the f4.8 aperture so they both are priced exactly the same so which one would you go for if you were a a mount user using would you go with the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 or would you go with the Sony 16-50 now this is might be a hard uh, decision because one lens is different this one says 16-50 focal life range and the other one is design which is the Sigma is designed for crop sensors so keep in mind everyone please the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 is designed for only crop sensors so if you put this on a full frame you're gonna see some heavy brunette in the corners now I did a video demonstrating that on the a7r at 35 you don't see the heavy brunette as much you can see the tips in the corners but once you hit 30 28 
you can definitely see it so definitely don't recommend it but anyway as I explained to you guys so 1835 is a short focal length but the aperture f1.8 gives you a lot of tons of a lot of light so that means you get a lot, a lot more light when it comes down to the app stops but if you are a mount user you have a choice I think you will probably choose the Sigma over the Sony to be honest and if you do choose this one I'm just let you guys know that the, the, the TD lens design it's not as sharp to be honest the Sigma is much much sharper it's much sharper even at f13 at f13 on the boat I would say with the 16 and 50 if I can remember the reason why I got rid of it like five days after I, I purchased it was because it wasn't that sharp when it hit about f11 f10 diffraction started to kick in and I wasn't very happy there was some serious diffraction that uh, started I'm not saying it was bad but I noticed the diffraction when I'm using the Xilma 1835 at f I would say f13 that's when diffraction starts but you see minimum but when you hit f16 you start to see the diffraction but it is still usable so this is why I went with the Sigma 1835 I don't like the diffraction and not only that the Sigma 1835 on the A mount had me really surprised me when it comes down to the corroborate aberrations and purple fringing red fringing I see way 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 less purple fringing and uh, any color fringing when it comes down to the quality of both lenses, I did the Sony 16 and 50 had a lot more fringing than the Sigma 18 and 35. That's why I went with the Sigma 18 and 35. So, with that said, guys, I'm just giving you guys some insight about some of the lenses that I choose for you guys to recommend if you are not on a budget and you just have some money to spend, and if you are any of these camera users, Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Fuji, uh, did I even put the Fuji in there? What did I did put the Fuji in there? No, I did not put the Fuji in there. Oh guys. Okay guys, I need to look up the Fuji one. The the one the Fuji film was it was it what was it? Eighteen? What was it? The Fuji Zoom ones. There it is. Now, this is an expensive one, so I'm gonna go to two Fuji lenses. Now, this is a 16 to 55 f 2.8, which I do recommend if you're buying into Fuji, and it's really, really sharp. And Fuji is a crop sensor camera, which they don't never invest or design any full frames because that that market is so saturated. So Fuji just focus its on crop sensor. This is really great, uh, 16, 16 to 55. If you have the two thousand, the the, the twelve hundred dollars to spend on the lens, but if you want to live a little bit cheaper, Fujinon XF eighteen to fifty five f two point eight to four R L M O I S is another cheap option for $700 this is probably the cheapest out of all the lenses but this one is only for Fuji so if you are a Fuji user and you want to invest in a zoom lens with different focal lengths but with good aperture for $700 this is a really good deal I think it's probably one of the best deals because it's an FX zoom lens which is really really high, highly recommended and really good and all I have heard is some positive uh, feedback about the lens but no that this is uh, on going to be for use for the crop sensor so uh, the focal length is going to be a little bit different so you're going to be shooting at like what 22 and 55 you're going to be from 20 I would say about what 20 22 24 to 70 I believe yeah so 1835 is going to get you like 24 to 70 equivalent for the Fujinon. I might be wrong, but with that said, everyone. But these are my top tips for you 
the lovely panda photographers out there that are shooting, trying to save up money, do have the money to invest in the glass, do want to actually spend a little bit of money, and you're looking for some some clarity, some information about which lens that you do recommend. Now personally, I don't use the Fujinaha, but I do have a, a, a fellow photographer that's telling me that if I was to uh, switch over to the Fujinon, this would be the lens that I would purchase. This is why I recommended the FX18-55 f2.8. Now, what about if I wanted to adapt my Sigma 18-35? Uh, I have to look into a, buying adapters for either the Canon version or the Sigma version. I believe the Canon version is more adaptable. Uh, I might be wrong. I don't know maybe the Sony version is I don't know I have to look into that see they even have adapters from Sony or Canon but with that said guys it's optional do the research before you do anything but okay so since oops down here But, and I'm trying to fix this really quick light. Come on. Why does this do that? But, complications of flying phones. Right. What's it doing that? All right, guys. So I'm gonna end the live. So think about what you're gonna be investing for. This video is just playing out for all you photographers. Doesn't matter if you're using Canon, Pentax, Fuji, Panasonic, whatever. Okay, to Fujinon or Sony. I have the options for you. You make the decision based on the qual, based on what you want to spend your money on and what you're going to be using it for so but if you want to ask me more questions you have an option to leave a comment down below uh, and I will get to you I'm, I'm, I'm literally fast responded to the comments but with that said everyone this has been the panel photographer eat sleep photography repeat and I will see you guys in the next video